In today's video, I'm gonna show you how you can balance your flash with ambient light, specifically using a light meter like this one here from Sekonic. I'm gonna show you how easy it is for you to figure out what that flash setting needs to be, coming right up. Welcome back everyone. I am back here at the park with Caitlin. Welcome back. She is back for more. I'm gonna show you today how to balance your flash with ambient light. I did a video a few weeks ago showing exactly how to do that. Uh, not using a light meter, but just kind of using your eyes and using your taste to figure out what that flash level is. And I received a lot of comments. People were asking, well, why don't you use a light meter? The correct way to do it is to use a light meter. And the reality is that for many years, I actually never used a light meter. I always did it to taste. However, it is a very good skill to be able to know how to use a light meter to get you the correct exposure. And I, I keep saying correct with air quotes because there's no really such thing as correct. Sometimes there's gonna be some shots where you want the flash to appear a little bit brighter. Sometimes you might wanna underexpose it. It's something that you do to your own creative taste. But for those people who wanna learn how to do it with a light meter so that they can get the accurate exposure, that's what we're gonna do. So. First things first, let's talk about the gear that I'm gonna be using to be able to do this. So for the lighting, we're gonna do the exact same lighting setup that we had in our first video. I'm gonna link that for you in the description, by the way, in case you missed it, but uh, I'm using the Manny Ortiz Beauty Dish Switch from Westcott. Really love this modifier because it gives you really nice soft light, uh, or it could give you a harder light just depending on how you set this thing up. I've got a um, deflection disc in the uh, inside of this modifier. And then I've also got the outer layer of diffusion on this. So should be giving us kind of a nice mix of like hard and soft light with this modifier. Uh, and then for the light, I'm using the Westcott FJ400. Really powerful strobe. Uh, in reality, for these types of outdoor shoots, you really don't get to push this as much as you would need to, especially on a day like today where it's overcast. Um, but it is a really fantastic light for shooting in bright uh, situations, really any type of environment that you'll find yourself in. You could take this light with you because it does have a built-in battery pack, which is really sweet. And then I've got a um, Kupo roller stand. This is like my absolute favorite roller stand to use for not just for studio photography, but shooting on location. Um, I don't have a sandbag with me. Technically, you should have one, but it's a pretty sturdy light, so I don't really have to worry about this thing toppling over. Um, it does have casters, so they are locked down. But um, this is gonna be our lighting setup. Let's talk about the camera and the lens that I'm gonna be using for this shoot. So for the camera for this shoot, I'm gonna be using the Sony Alpha 7 IV, a really nice full frame camera. And I've got it paired up with probably what is my favorite lens to use for portraits. This is the Sony 85 millimeter F1.8 lens. Really nice lens for shooting headshots. You can do full body stuff. Looks great shot wide open. Looks great, shot stop down. Really, really nice lens and a really affordable one. Uh, by the way, all the products that I'm showing you in this video, if you're curious about them, I have them linked in the description below. They are affiliate links, they do help out the channel. Uh, this helps me to create new content in the future, so thank you for the support. And I also have the Westcott FJ X2M. Uh, this is the remote that's gonna be triggering that flash. So. Um, now that we know kind of like the gear that I'm using, I'm gonna show you exactly how to use that light meter to balance your flash. But before we do that, let's figure out what the ambient light exposure is, and then we'll add the flash. So to get things started, let's talk about our ambient light exposure. Those are the settings that we're gonna dial into the camera with the flash turned off, and it's just gonna expose for the ambient light that's around us. It's a little bit overcast. Sun may decide to pop out, who knows? Um, but we're gonna try to figure out what the exposure needs to be for the environment that's around Caitlin. So I'm gonna start off here using live view and I could see that at one 1 125th of a second, F2, ISO 100, I'm actually getting a nice exposure on the background and I'm actually getting a great exposure on Caitlin as well. So just like I mentioned in the last video, you could totally shoot in a setting in an environment like this, natural light, you don't have to use a flash, but if you want to add a little bit of glow, a little bit of a pop to your images, that's where the flash kind of comes in and does some really cool things. Now, I'm at 1 1 25th of a second and I'm getting a pretty nice exposure for the environment. If I wanted to darken the environment for creative purposes, what I could do is leave my aperture the same, leave my ISO the same, and I could actually just increase my shutter speed. So I'm gonna bring my shutter speed to 1 2 50th of a second. And now, when I take that same photograph, Take another one here, 
Now I'm gonna put these up side by side. You're gonna notice that the shot at 1 250th of a second is gonna be a little bit darker than that shot at 1 1 25th of a second. So let's just say for creative purposes for this video that I wanna do that darker background. Uh, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna get that flash to balance with the ambient light. So my aperture is an F2, and we need to basically get our flash output to give F2 uh, in terms of the flash output. So how do we do that? We do it with a light meter. So let me show you how to do that. All right, so let's talk about how we use our light meter to give us the correct flash exposure. We were saying that the aperture that we set up that looked decent was F2. So our shutter speed and our ISO are actually dialed into the Sekonic light meter. So you see it's uh, 1 250th for the shutter speed, 100 for the um, ISO. And what we're trying to do is we're gonna adjust the power level of this flash until it gives us an F2 for our light meter reading. So I'm actually gonna dial this up here. Uh, let's see, I'm just gonna play around with the settings here because let's just pretend I turned this on, didn't know what it was supposed to be. So first things first, you're gonna push this button here on the side. Uh, this is gonna be to measure the exposure. So once you press that, the light meter goes into kind of like a standby mode and it's waiting to see that flash and to give you that reading. So I'm gonna put it right under Caitlin's chin, fire off that flash, and you're gonna see that right now where the settings are currently at, it's giving F4 for the reading. Now, if we wanted to, we could just dial in these settings into the, into the camera. I could put F4, 1 250th of a second, ISO 100. Where Caitlin is standing right now, those settings would be perfect. But let's just say for creative purposes, I really wanna to get to F2. How do I do that? Well, really simple. What I'm gonna end up doing is I'm gonna take my power and I'm gonna lower the flash power. And I'm gonna guess I had it at uh, 7.1, I brought it to five, and let's see where we are now. So at a five, now I'm at F2.8, so we're getting close. So now I can go down from a five, maybe we go to 4.0. We'll take a measurement again. And now at 4.0 on the flash, we now have balanced our settings we've balanced our exposure now i'm showing you how to do this because i want you to be able to do that i want I want you to have this in your back pocket right however i hope that you could see that there's still kind of like a process involved when you're using a light meter because you're still having to dial the power up or down based on what the light meter is telling you do you need a light meter this might be a hot take, I don't know, but in my opinion, it's good to have because if you're working with clients, um, this process of working with people and getting uh, precise measurements, it makes you look like very technical. It makes you look like you really know what you're doing. And that's great, but I think it's very important for you to be able to do what I'm showing you right now without a light meter. You don't have to have one of these. And I know that there's gonna be people in the comments saying that, no, you have to have a light meter. It's the right way to do things. Listen, I've done it for years, never had a light meter, never had a problem, but I will tell you that having one of these has been really handy. Where this does come in handy is if you wanna remember what your lighting settings were. For example, if I had a notebook, which I often carry a notebook with me, and I say, okay, I really love how this shot turned out. Maybe uh, Caitlin is gonna hire me to do this again in some other location, and she wants all the shots to look the same. Well, if I know that we shot these at F2.0 with these settings, I can literally go to any location and just meter this setting and we're going to get the same type of light wherever it is that we go. Um, so it does have its advantages, especially if you use multiple lights. Like let's say if we had a backlight or two backlights um, and we want to measure and, and read those different lights and get the proper exposure. Maybe these are F2.0 for the main light. Maybe the rear lights might be uh, F1.4 because maybe they're a little bit brighter. You can dial that in precisely go to a different location and then do that again. So I don't wanna dunk on light meters, but uh, the reality is what I just showed you now to just use a single light, you really don't need a light meter to do that. But if you do end up wanting to use it, now you know how to use it. So with that in mind, let's start shooting and let's see what we come up with.
So as you can see, balancing your flash with your ambient light isn't terribly difficult. You could do it with a light meter. You could just do it with your eyeballs, just looking at the shot and seeing if it looks good. Uh, either method works fine, but at least you have both of them in your back pocket in the event that you need to use them. Uh, so if you wanna learn how to do it without the uh, light meter, I already made a video on that. I'm gonna link that in the description for this video. And while you're down there, make sure you leave a like, subscribe to the channel. I have new videos releasing all the time. I have Caitlin's Instagram down there as well. So make sure you give her a follow. She has great work and uh, show your support because why not? While you're here, listen, I've, I've been talking about this video that I use a flash without a light meter. I'm going to put it here on the screen for you. Go ahead and check it out. You can learn how to balance your flash with ambient light. And I've got another video that I think you might find useful for using a flash on location. So check that one out and I'll see you there.